Hi, I'm Lynn Langett, and this is a short video to talk about data quality services in SQL Server 2012, and I'm looking at different aspects in these short five-minute videos. This one's going to be about knowledge base management, so the first section in the data quality client tool, and I'm going to show how you, um, the steps involved in working with uh, matching policy. So I've skipped the very first step, which is to take an existing knowledge base or to create a knowledge base and to uh, work with matching policy. So I, I've uh, right-clicked that on the first uh, section and gone into the knowledge base um, that, I, that I've already created called Demo for Video. So I have a data source here and you can use a SQL Server or an Excel file and uh, then I've selected a sample database and I've selected a table to do uh, matching. And the purpose of matching, in case you didn't watch the first video, is to uh, you work with the data quality services to help define uh, rules so that duplicates can be detected in your data. So I have a source column here and you can see all the different source columns and then I've mapped this to uh, the domain that I'm working with. So you can see the, um, the, the domains over here in the demo and this is from the sample data and I've mapped the city to the last name. Now I could also um, add a column mapping, delete it, I could create a new domain, a simple or a composite domain and I can preview the data source here. So uh, once I do the mapping, then sort of the, the heat of the heart of this is the matching policy. So I'm going to click next, and what I did for the purposes of the video is I already created one matching rule on um, one of the domains, US um, last name. So in, in here, I just clicked plus to create a matching rule. I just gave it the default name. You can put a description, and then you have a, a score available. So you select a domain, and then you can say um, that it should be similar or exact. Um, exact has a weight of 100%. Similar has some value that is uh, less than exact. Now if you um, want to have composite domains, which is like maybe you have a person and they have an address, so they have a name and they have a street address and a city and a state, so it's, it's like a composite record. And if you wanted to, for example, base the matching of the record value, say the address, on the name, then you'd set the name as a prerequisite. And when you do that, then you'd have to add an additional rule. So um, I don't think I have a composite domain here. That's why it's showing me that I, I can't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back because I have a simple domain. And then I'm going to set this back to a similarity match so that I have a, and turn off the prerequisite so that I have a, um, that I have ability to set the weighting value. And inside of here, exact always says zero, of course. And then I'm going to say similar. And um, whatever rules that I put in here, they have to add up to 100%. So I could put, you know, more than one rule, but for the purposes of the demo, I'm just going to do one. It gives me an error up to that point. And then the way this works is I just click start and I run it. And again, for the purposes of the video, I already ran it twice um, because it does take a minute to run. And you can say create overlapping clusters, so um, one over the top, or create discrete clusters, non-overlapping. So once you do that, kind of a cool thing with this, let's see if I can get this to pop up here, is you have this profiler which shows you um, the new values, the unique values, and the new unique values, and you can pass your mouse over it and see it. And then um, you can, and I was playing around with the rule and changing it, you can um, change the rule or the rules and run it so it's very uh, iterative. And then you can see which rule works better. Now in this case, I don't maybe I made one change because this had 37 clusters and this has 36 and you have the ability to restore previous rules so this is really where you get your rules right against your data and then once you do that then you go next and then again I ran this one already what you do is um, you can say um, you can run it then against the actual data and you can have overlapping or non overlapping clusters and then you can look at your results either the matched results and it'll show you this is a color indicator of the particular rule. Not only add one, you could have more than one rule. So it says it was matched based on this rule and then unmatched over here. And then if I can get this to come up, this might be a little tricky. There we go. And I can see the matching rule and I can see the matching results. And then you click finish and then you're done. So this is a quick overview of how to use the matching policy in DQS, and this is Lynn Langett. More at www.lynnlangett.com.